What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the Comp to your 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, we are going to be talking about the troubleshooting methodology. So you're going to learn how to identify a problem, research the problem using a knowledge base or the internet if applicable, establish a theory of probable cause, test the theory to determine the cause, establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify potential effects, implement the solution or escalate as necessary, verify full system functionality, and if applicable, implement preventative measures and finally document your findings so that is everything we're going to talk about in this video all right all right so the first thing you need to be aware of when troubleshooting a problem is understanding that the symptoms are not the problem the actual problem is what's causing the symptoms to manifest to identify the problem you need to use the following procedures as needed you need to gather information duplicate the problem if possible question users identify symptoms, determine if anything has changed, approach multiple problems individually. Now, before making any changes, you need to make sure you safeguard your current settings. If possible, back up the entire system. On a Windows computer, you want to back up the system registry using RegEdit, and you want to print out or record your firmware, UEFI, BIOS settings, network and software settings as well. Next thing you want to do, you want to start the process by gathering information. So some of the information you may need may be obtained from log files created by the operating system. You can also compare the current settings for the device up against its own default settings. And then other sources of information could include stuff like network logs, printer self test to display the amount of RAM or the number of pages that may have been printed, current BIOS, firmware settings, hardware information, and the Windows update history. Then you want to proceed to duplicating the problem if necessary. So if possible, go ahead and try to duplicate the problem. Try the same steps with the same files and output devices that were originally involved. Record any error messages or dialogues that are displayed. Use the screen capture utility to capture error messages or dialogue. Next, you want to question users. So ask the users that have reported the issues to you to provide details about the problems they are experiencing. When asking users, remember that some of them may be scared for fear of believing that they may have done something that they were not supposed to do. Just remind them in a compassionate and understanding manner that you are simply there to help them solve the issue they are experiencing with the network and or their device. Now, some of the ways you can establish rapport and build a good relationship with your customers are to use proper language and avoid using jargon, acronyms, and slang when applicable. Maintain a positive attitude and project confidence. Actively listen and take notes and avoid interrupting the customer. Avoid judging the customer. Avoid getting into arguments with the customer. Ask permission before touching, viewing, or moving anything in and around their desk. And then use your smartphone for only business related matters when you are in the presence of the customer. The next thing you want to do is identify symptoms. So as you're talking to the customers, you should be trying to identify symptoms. Some possible symptoms could include things like loud noises come from the computer, unpleasant odors, unexpected messages, flickering lights, slower than normal system performance, inability to connect to network resources, blank screens and software not performing as expected. Some questions that you should ask the user are things like, did you hear anything different from usual? Do you usually print to a network printer? Do you remember what apps were open when the problem happened? Have you used this device before or was it just installed? Now be mindful that these are just questions to help get the ball rolling towards identifying the problem. Next thing you want to do is determine if anything has changed. So determine if anything has changed, such as device settings, upgraded hardware, updated operating systems or apps, cables, etc. The change might be the reason for the failure that you are trying to troubleshoot. In some ways to determine if anything has changed as follows, you can review operating systems and application update logs, review antivirus, anti-malware, scan histories, check the BIOS, UEFI, firmware revisions 
options for updates, determine if new hardware was recently installed, check to see what apps were recently updated, etc. There's just a whole plethora of things that you can do, but you need to determine if anything has changed so you can try to pinpoint exactly what is causing the problem. And then next you want to approach multiple problems individually. So multiple problems could be the result of a common issue, such as problems taking place with the network. But unless you know for sure that it's a network problem, it's easier to figure out the solution to a single problem before moving on to the next. All right, let's talk about step two of the troubleshooting methodology. This is researching the knowledge base or the internet. So always remember that the knowledge base and or the internet are your best friends when it comes to troubleshooting. If your organization has its own knowledge base, start your research there first. If not, then head out to the internet to conduct research. And when you're out there searching for possible reasons, you need to keep this information in mind. You need to keep in mind whether you suspect a hardware or a software problem try searching the internet for symptoms before going to a particular vendor's website to search. Use keywords that describe the symptoms of problems. Be sure to include the brand, model, and operating system in your search. Pay attention to the dates of proposed solutions if multiple solutions are given, as newer solutions may work better than older solutions. Note the operating system or app version listed because sometimes the solution will work with older or newer versions than the correct one. And for apps that have cloud or local network versions, make sure you specify the correct version. Step three, you want to establish a theory of probable cause. So once you think you have successfully researched these solutions and identified potential issues that may be causing the problem, it is now time for you to establish a theory of probable cause. And to do that, you want to question the obvious. So sometimes the solution to a problem could be something very simple that just goes unnoticed. So for example, a user calls the help desk to report that their screen just suddenly went black. You arrive to investigate the issue. As you are investigating the issue, you notice the power lights to the monitor are not on. You look behind the monitor to see that the power cord is plugged in. You follow the power cord to the wall outlet to discover that the power cord is not plugged into the outlet. You then inform the user that the monitor was not plugged into the outlet. The user then recalls accidentally kicking something under the desk, which more than likely was the power cord from the outlet. You then plug the power cord back into the outlet and secure the power cord with zip ties to the desk in such a manner as to prevent the user from accidentally kicking the power cord in the future. And guess what? Problem solved. You need to also consider multiple approaches. So as a rule that you should tell yourself and only yourself is the KISS rule or the keep it simple, stupid rule. Sometimes there are multiple approaches to solving a problem, but it is best to go with the simplest and most easy to implement for an approach. So for example, if a user is experiencing problems with their keyboard, such as sticky keys, simply swap out the keyboard for another one so that the user can continue on with their work instead of you trying to take apart the keys to remove all the stickiness. And something else that you should consider is called divide and conquer. So sometimes problems will arise that may deal with components in various subsystems. So take, for example, a printer. From the time a user hits the print button until a document is actually printed out, there are various subsystems linked to the printer, which could possibly cause a print failure. The printing subsystems include the printer, the USB cable between the printer and the computer, the USB port, the print driver and the operating system, and the application application, each could cause a problem. First thing you could do is to check to see if the printer is turned on and if so, does it have ink or toner? If not, that may be the problem. If it does, then check the USB cable to the printer and the computer to make sure that it is plugged in on each device in the correct ports. If not, then move on to the next print subsystem until you isolate the problem. This is called the divide and conquer technique, which allows for you to find and fix problems in a systematic manner. All right, the next step of the troubleshooting methodology is to test the theory to determine the cause. So once you believe you have established probable cause, it is now time for you to test the theory to determine the cause. To test the theory, change what you think is causing the problem. Some examples could be updating the device drivers, uninstalling the device, and letting the operating system reinstall the device, swapping out cables, moving a USB device to a different port, and 
installing updates on the operating system or installing updates for apps. Now, after you make a single change in the system, retest it to see if the problem is solved. Now, as a side note here, if you do not record the current configuration of the system's hardware and software, before you make a change to test your theory, you will not be able to reset the system to its previous conditions if your first change does not solve the problem. Now, once the theory is confirmed, you need to determine the next steps to resolve the problem. So if your theory is confirmed, you gotta go ahead and solve the problem. So here are some examples from the previous section. So you updated the device drivers. Now you continue to use the updated device drivers. You uninstall the device and you let the operating system reinstall the device. If the device now operates properly, then continue to use it. You swapped out a cable. If the replacement cable is not needed elsewhere, Elsewhere, continue to use it. You move the USB device to a different port. If the USB device now works, you must decide if the USB port host device, you know, the card, motherboard, or hub is needed to be replaced. You installed updates to the operating system. If installing these operating system updates solve the problem, then plan to implement the solution on other affected systems. Then you installed updates for apps. If installing the updated apps solve the problem, then plan to implement the solution on other affected systems as well. If the theory is not confirmed, you need to establish a new theory or escalate the problem. So if you come to the conclusion that your theory doesn't work, the next thing you need to do is develop a new theory and test it. If you are confident that your theory is what is causing the problem and you have identified the correct problematic subsystem, you need to move to the next step in the process of testing the subsystem. So for example, if you remove a USB cable from a USB port and plug that same cable into a different yet similar system and the system works fine, then your issue might not actually be the USB cable, but the actual USB port on the original system. Some of the issues could be damaged contact pins or a buildup of dirt inside of the port. Now, if you have concluded that there is no dirt nor any damaged contact pins inside of the USB port, your next step may be to escalate the problem to the next support tier. Step five, we need to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify potential effects. So once you have identified the problem and discovered a solution, it is now time to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify potential effects. An example for how to deal with a malware outbreak is as follows. You need to identify and research malware symptoms, quarantine the infected systems, disable the systems, restore and windows, remediate the infected systems by updating the anti-malware software, scan and use removal techniques in safe mode or the pre-installation environment. You need to schedule scans and run updates. You need to enable system restore and create a restore point in Windows. And then finally, and most importantly, you need to educate the user. Step six, you need to implement the solution or escalate as necessary. So if you are responsible for implementing the plan of action, follow it carefully. Be sure to note any problems with the plan or any additional problems that you may observe. If you are not responsible for implementing the plan of action, escalate it to the department that is responsible. Step seven, you need to verify full system functionality and if applicable, implement preventative measures. Now, once you have implemented the solution, the next step is to check to make sure that the system peripheral or device actually does what it is supposed to do. An example of a full functionality test can include some things like this. Connect to a wired network and open a folder and then a file. And then connect to a wireless network and open a folder and then a file. Connect to the internet and view a page that changes frequently, such as a news aggregator, print to a local printer, print to a network printer, open the file from local or network storage, edit it and save it under a different name, scan a document or a photograph, copy a file to a USB drive, burn an optical disc, extend the desktop or mirror dual displays depending on the task requirements, scroll through a document with the mouse or pointing device, pinch zoom a web page with the touch screen, run a backup, run the OS, an app update process and run an app and use it normally by opening something, editing it, saving the data, and then closing the app. 
And then finally, you need to document your findings and lessons learned, actions and outcomes. So when it comes to problems arising in IT, more than likely you are going to encounter similar problems over and over again. Instead of approaching each problem as if it is the first time you've seen the problem, the best approach is to document your findings, lessons learned, actions and outcomes for each problem you have solved so that you can build a repository of solutions for future problems you are bound to encounter again in the near future. Be sure to add any figures such as screen captures, diagrams, photographs, etc. that will help you and others solve similar problems next time. Detailed documentation is your friend when it comes to solving problems in IT. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, identify symptoms is a part of which step? Is it step two, the research, the knowledge base, and or the internet? Step four, testing the theory. Step one, identifying the problem. Or step six, implementing the solution or escalating the problem. So identifying symptoms is a part of which step? The correct answer is step one. It's part of identifying the problem. All right, next question. You have swapped a cable with a brand new cable and the device still does not work. Which of the following is the correct conclusion to draw? Is it something else besides the cable is wrong? Is it the port is defective? Is it the replacement cable is not known to be working? Or is the device defective? So you have swapped a cable with a brand new cable and the device still does not work. Which of the following is the correct conclusion to draw? The correct answer would be the replacement cable is not known to be working. So the brand new cable, you have no way of verifying if that thing actually works or not. All right, and the final question is, setting up staff training to avoid malware and viruses is an example of what? Establishing a plan of action, identifying a problem, testing a theory, or preventative measures. So setting up staff training to avoid malware and viruses is an example of what the correct answer is. Preventative measures. Teaching your staff to not click on random links and emails is important, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So in summary, we have talked about the troubleshooting methodology. Now, if you felt like you have gotten something valuable from this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.